the world most honored watch is Longines. Longines watches have won 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals, and more honors for accuracy than any other timepiece. Longines, the world's most honored watch, is made and guaranteed by the Longines Whitnall Watch Company. It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnall Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnall, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Mr. Donald I. Rogers, an editor of the New York Herald Tribune, and Mr. William Bradford Huey, <coughs> editor of the American Mercury. Our distinguished guest for this evening is Mr. Paul Martin, Washington Bureau Chief of the Gannett Newspapers. The opinions expressed are necessarily those of the speakers. Mr. Martin, where are the Gannett Newspapers in the United States? Well, uh we have 22 newspapers, and they're in four different states, in uh, Connecticut, uh, New York, New Jersey, and Illinois. And you are head of the organization in Washington that's responsible for gathering the Washington news for those newspapers. Uh, that's correct, sir. Are there Republican newspapers? Well, they're a mixture. Some are Republican, some are Democratic, some are independent. Uh, now, tonight, I'm sure that the Chronoscope <coughs> audience would like... Uh, we've Our people have heard a great deal about the president's war with the press. Tonight, I'm sure that our audience would like to hear some of your views as to that. Now, sir, uh, what's at the bottom of uh, Mr. Truman's uh, uh, seeming criticism of the press? Well, I suppose that the press finds out things that uh, aren't very pleasing uh, politically to the administration. Is the press generally uh, antagonistic to the president? Well, the press is always inquiring, uh, as far as I know, uh, regardless of what kind of a party is in power. You always try to find out things, and when you find out things, uh, sometimes the things aren't uh, uh, politically copacetic for the administration. That's particularly true of this administration, isn't it? Well, uh, we've been treated to... <laughs> Uh, quite a bit of revelation here. Uh, I can't recall a time, certainly I'm no old timer down there, but uh, I can't recall a time when we've had more investigations of uh, alleged scandals in government. You'll figure it's, it's fear behind the uh, president's war with the press. Oh, I wouldn't say that altogether. Um, uh, I think that uh, you, you've got to remember this, that uh, the strain of that office must be tremendous. I don't suppose any one of us uh, can realize what tremendous pressures are brought to bear upon the President of the United States. Makes him grouchy? Well, uh, certainly uh, he's got, uh, he, he has the matter of war, peace, the lives of uh, citizens, the future of our country, and uh, much of this depends upon the decisions he must necessarily make. Now, as a newspaper man, sir, do you think that it's <coughs> proper for a reporter in Washington to maintain a critical attitude? Well, I think it's, uh, let's don't say critical, let's say an inquiring attitude. I think, uh, was it Socrates who said something about a divine gadfly? Well, we're sort of gadflies. You, it's you're an inquiring attitude, not a critical one. You, you, are, you are one of the checks and balances in our precisely, free government. Precisely. And, and it's up to you to question uh, the information that the government seems to put out. Well, in the wisdom of our founding fathers, they guaranteed freedom of the press and the Constitution of the United States, and we try to perform that function. Uh, is it your opinion that the press has been unfair to the president at any time? On the whole, no. No, it's I don't think Very so. objective, isn't it? Well, yes, I, I suppose that there are certain uh, people who perhaps uh, take unfair advantage, go too far one way or another. Individuals, but, uh, but, the, yes. but the press as a whole you feel is objective. I would stand up. In its them. news column. Yes, I think so. Now, you mentioned that uh, there have been a great many investigations. Have those investigations been uh, initiated by newspapers? Yes, that's an interesting thing. Now, 
I cannot recall a major investigation of the last several years that has not first had its origin in an expose in a newspaper. Would you care to cite an example, <laughs> Mr. Martin? <laughs> yes, I will. I'll say that Jack Steele and Bert Andrews, the New York Herald Tribune, uh, pulled a brilliant run on the five percenter inquiry of 1949. And then the key for investigation was stimulated in large part by uh, uh, the press talking about uh, the racketeers and the gamblers. And then the St. Louis Post-Dispatch comes on with uh, the Finnegan matter out in St. Louis. And we get into the tax scandals. Uh, I think that the press has stimulated these, but Congress, uh, as our legislative branch of government, armed with its inquiring function, has gone ahead and made the, the legal investigations. You mentioned the five percenter investigation. What was the final result of the five percenter investigation? Well, uh, uh, one man went to jail, John Maragon. What happened to General Vaughn? Well, the uh, Senate. The Senate committee officially censored uh, General Vaughn, uh, the president's military aide, but the president didn't dismiss him over, despite cries in Congress and in the press and from the public for dismissal. Do you think that that might have something to do with the continued uh, wave of corruption in government? Well, I, I think that uh, it, it certainly sets up an attitude if you're going to protect people who have been officially censored by a Senate committee and have been found to be doing all sorts of favors for people on the outside of government. Well, it, it just doesn't quite concur with uh, where, my idea. Where would you pin that responsibility? <laughs> well, I, who does it work for? <coughs> I'd say Mr. Truman. <laughs> well, I seem to think that... Uh, now, sir, uh, on this business of, uh, Senator McCarthy was on this show not long ago, and you've mentioned uh, investigations. Uh, what is your personal attitude toward McCarthy? Well, he's a very controversial figure. He's a member of the United States Senate, elected by the people of Wisconsin. Um, uh, they're trying to create a smear word nowadays. They call McCarthyism. They're going to run you down if, uh, uh, by just labeling you as being product of McCarthyism, and yet I think that uh, the discussion about communists and government has, has been a good thing. You I think, think it's uh, a useful purpose. You think Senator McCarthy, uh, to paraphrase one of the well-known magazines, deserves well of the Republic? Well, uh, yeah, I'd say so. My goodness, uh, you got a lot of, you got 96 people in the United States Senate, and uh, if you had to rate him, I'd say that he is, uh, he served a very useful purpose for the time that uh, he's been now, there. Now, sir, the president apparently is fighting back some to the security order there that he is. Uh, is that an effort of the, of the president to restrain the press? Well, he elected to uh, issue an executive order that uh, he terms a security order, and what that does is uh, it delegates to uh, every head of a department or a federal agency the power to, to automatically classify material as uh, security information. Is that an effort towards censorship? It's not, uh, it's a little different from censorship. Uh, censorship is where uh, you find out information might be damaging to your national security, you take it to an official agent and he censors it. Here but the this stops yeah. the information before it ever gets to never, censorship. Never be available to you. No, you won't be able to get it. Isn't that dangerous? Well, uh... Dangerous to the Republic. Well, I'm... I just fundamentally believe in uh, as much information as we can poss possibly release. Because I think that if the American people are given uh, uh, the opportunity to judge, if they have the facts at hand, I, I just have faith in the American public. Now, at the same time, I wouldn't want us to be uh, releasing willy-nilly well, information we? that would benefit an enemy. Have we well, released any information? Well, I can't recall information? a single instance of any information that's ever been published in newspapers or magazines that has not been cleared by an official agency of the United States government mm -hmm. Do you think, in advance. Do you think, then, that, uh, that it's an effort more to uh, cover up uh, ineptitude and perhaps corruption uh, than it is to... Uh, protect the country from uh, certain information that might be useful to the enemy. Well, Mr. Huey, 
that is assuming a, a motive or a purpose on the part of people. I won't say that. I don't believe that uh, they actually had that in mind. But what I do say is, it could be abused. Do you could very easily be abused. In your experience in Washington, do you see a trend, uh, as they have in totalitarian countries, do you see a trend toward control of the press? Well, I see a trend toward concentration of power. And I see a trend toward great growth of government. And I see a trend uh, of people who get in uh, a position of power and, and they feel that responsibility. And then are they going to be the sole and automatic judge of uh, what should be released to the American people? Well, maybe their uh, decision might be wise. And then again, maybe uh, it is not wise or maybe they're even trying to cover up. Have something. you any examples where this might have happened? <coughs> well, uh, yes, I, I know a certain thing. I can't uh, uh, name the uh, particular uh, names and places, but I can tell you this, uh, that there was an airplane that went down in the Far East not so long ago, and there were Americans killed on board that plane, and that was not an accident. That was sabotage, and that has been hushed up. And it's still not been released. And that's been deliberately withheld from the American people. It's been people. deliberately withheld, <coughs> and I cannot see what security information there is in that at all. Well, uh, Mr. Martin, uh, as I understand what you've said then, you do think that the press is continuing to be vigilant, that it has rendered a service, and uh, that the American people can still depend on the press to bring them the news. Thank right. you very much for being with us tonight, sir. The editorial board for this edition of the Ron Jean Chronoscope was Mr. Donald I. Rogers and Mr. William Bradford Huey. Our distinguished guest was Mr. Paul Martin, Washington Bureau Chief of the Gannett Newspaper. The world's most honored watch is Longines. And the worldwide prestige of the Longines watch is proof of its unsurpassed accuracy and dependability. Longines honors result from the excellence of the Longines watch movement, the beating heart of every Longines watch. Here is the matured product of the skills and experience acquired through 85 years of fine watchmaking. Note the smooth, flawless mechanism of the Longines balance assembly as revealed by the ultra-slow motion camera. This is the guardian of the accuracy of the Longines watch. Through his magnifying glass, the skilled watchmaker sees the precious hand finishing of essential parts, which makes the Longines watch so superior a timepiece. Yes, these are the tangible reasons which make Longines the world's most honored watch. And these are the reasons why Longines watches have won 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals, and so many honors for accuracy in fields of precise timing. Now, when you buy a watch, for yourself or as a gift. Remember, if you pay $71.50 or more for your watch, you're paying the price of a Longines. And you should insist on getting a Longines, the world's most honored watch. Premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. This is Frank Knight again, inviting you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for The Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines, sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. This is the CBS Television Network.